So this is uh, stage two of the pipe organ project. In my other video I showed the pipe organ basically working. Uh, since then I've actually added some percussion onto the back. Uh, but just to recap what we've got here, we've got 29 lead pipes all stopped. Um, basically from C to E. Uh, we've got a MIDI controller which has uh, got a keyboard on it just here and a little screen telling you the channels, SD card reader there for the MIDI files. Um, inside is a blower from an old radar set which is housed in here in this um, box here. Uh, got various switch panels here for uh, controlling the MIDI direction so you can plug an external keyboard in uh, all, obviously all fused. Um, we've got an on off switch and a blower switch for switching the uh, fan on and off. 12 volt power in. Uh, a cooling fan for the um, controller board. I've actually used a, a J Omega Electronics uh, MIDI controller board. Originally I did my own with the Arduino um, which worked but there was so much wiring it was a bit of a mess so I decided to go over to the J Omega board which was a massive step up in the right direction. It made life a lot simpler. Um, I've also got a DC to DC converter which converts the 12 volts in to 0 to 30 volts out and that controls the speed of the fan. On some tunes where lots of pipes have been blown you might want the airflow to be slightly lower. Just get leisure to tweak it basically. So I said I added percussion. Um, what we've got here is a large tambourine um, which I'm using as a drum. Um, you can see what I've done is I've got a tambourine stand. You can buy these as standard things, made by a little bracket. And then on the front, uh, probably come around the side, you can see this device here is a solenoid. It's the same as the ones which operate the valves inside here. Um, and basically, what it does. Powers up the electromagnet, which pulls this drumstick, and the drumstick obviously hits the drum. So there's the drumstick, and if I manually operate it, just in there, you can just about see it bangs the drum. Um, I also have played around with adding a snare to the tambourine. That's this one here. Um, basically, that's there's snare wires that you get on a standard snare drum. Um, if I take this piece of cardboard out, it gives me a snare sound, which is not necessarily a good thing, but in certain situations it might be useful. Anyway, the piece of cardboard isolates it from the tambourine, so it sounds like a normal drum in normal use. It's a good way of getting two instruments in one, really, for no extra effort. And the other instrument, uh, percussion instrument we've got here is a cymbal. It's a stag, a small 8-inch um, stag cymbal. Uh, not very expensive, actually very good. I've experimented with different ways of hitting. Um, the best one seems to be basically a piece of um, cheap drumstick with the piece of uh, one of these tambourine um, cymbals on. Um, and it gives a nice sort of semi-tambourine -sam uh, semi, um, sound. Not like a traditional sort of crash, but uh, quite pleasant and it's you know as good as it gets really. It's operated from the same as the drum, um, another one of these solenoid valves. Um, basically, as long as as long as they're mounted horizontally like this, they're not actually working uphill. There's plenty of power there to actually pull them. Um, if you were to try and operate them in a different way, it probably wouldn't work. Um, these use about 200 milliamps. They're pretty pretty light on power, so and they work quite quickly. I'm sure there's better better solenoids out there, but I found the ones I was trying were just so much uh, too much power that they were um, not good. We've also got on here a bell, which rings like that. It actually sounds better in real life when it's playing. Um, this is actually a Tibetan bell. Um, basically, it was an easy thing to make. Um, I, I put various washers and stuff under here. There's a piece of foam here to, to sort of give it the right balance of um, damping. Um, Oh, it's, you know, as I say, easy, fairly pleasant. I think the thing with percussion is it can sound truly dreadful on some pipe organs I've heard. It, it literally dominates the whole thing. So the, these are fairly tame and fairly quiet. They're not, they're not too harsh. So I think they fit in with most tunes. 
And basically, when you encode the MIDI, um, it's effectively another another note. That's all. It's I, I sort of map them to be down um, sort of a two or three octaves below the rest of the pipes, and then you just modify the MIDI file um, with your own drum rhythm. Uh, I'll play an example tune. Uh, got here probably the Dan Buster's March. They didn't the world's best uh, rendition, but it's it's easy to do. Uh, so turn the blower on. Uh, this blower probably sounds a bit worse than it is because I found that this iPad camera actually picks up the uh, the sound of the fan a lot more than it actually is in real life. Hope you can hear my voice over it. So if I just press play, I can hear the drum. Just about to see it going there. <laughs> 